Hello there. Thanks for tuning in, for actually stopping in to watch this video. The last video I did, I did mostly Marvel. I just included one independent, which was a manga. And I last time I included in my blog post for that video an honorable mention. And I think I'm going to do this in the future. Because sometimes I will read books, or I have been lately anyways, books that I do not have a physical copy of. I do, they're not, you know, even ebooks from Kindle or anything. I just happen to find copies of them as a last resort online. Typically, I prefer to read a hard copy of anything that I read. But if I cannot buy it because it's too expensive... Or if my local library cannot get a copy for me, then I will try and see if I can find something online. And I have done that before. And to find out what those books are going to be, I'm not going to mention them in my wrap-ups. Because if I don't have anything to physically show you guys, it's kind of awkward talking about a book that I can't show you what I'm talking about. So you can follow me on Goodreads to see what that book was that I read, or you can click the link down below to see the blog post where I will honorably mention the book that I read online. Well, anyways, let's get on with the weekly wrap-up. First up, we have John Constantine Hellblazer, Empathy is the Enemy, and this is written by Denise Mina, I think her name is. Well, anyways, um, this was probably one of the first Hellblazer volumes that I read where the whole volume was the story. So I thought that was pretty cool because I've read a couple of Hellblazers or Constantines where it was just varied stories collected in a volume. But this whole volume was the story and it was about empathy and this like cult like of heretics off the coast of Scotland and how they've been secretly trying to build this thing on behalf of some demon in a alternate dimension. So I found it really interesting. I thought the artwork was a little too dark and I don't mean dark as in it was kind of horror or no I mean it was just drawn too dark. It's kind of sometimes it was kind of hard to make out what you're looking at because the tones they're using are just really too dark and I thought a variation of tones or colors would have helped improve this but I did still enjoy this I thought this was one of the better Constantine stories I've read in a very long time because I'll, I'll honestly admit that a majority of the Constantine stories I've read have been like average as far as when it comes to my standards of what I think is a good book. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I It was definitely a page turner for me. There was, it, it definitely was interesting. And I don't know that this author has written any other Constantine books. It does say that she has written other things called The Dead Hour and Field of Blood. I Maybe I should look them up and find out what they are because she seems like a good writer and maybe I would like reading her other stuff. So I did rate this one 4 out of 5 stars. I Like I said, I really enjoyed it. And if you want to read a good supernatural thriller story, then check this one out. I, I, I thought it was a good one. Hellblazer, John Constantine Hellblazer, Dangerous Habits. And this is one of the earlier books that kind of sets up a major event and to... John Constantine's abilities. And what happens is that John Constantine wakes up one day and discovers he's very, very sick. He's deathly ill. <clears throat> he goes to the doctor and discovers he has lung cancer. So he goes around his circle of magical friends trying to find a way to perhaps cure himself, to prevent himself from dying. And realizes that he's really screwed over a lot of people during his life. He's kind of a big douche. But anyways, I thought that this made for a very interesting story. Because it kind of 
gave him a human side. Like, he isn't really such a douche that he really does care for other people. He meets a special friend in the cancer ward of the hospital, and there's not much else I can say about this without spoiling it. So I'm really not going to go into too much detail, but I thought it was a rather well-written story. The artwork was decent. And like I said, the plot and everything was decent. So, and this is a pivotal moment in the Constantine book, so you kind of have to, you should read this one if you're going to read Hellblazer. I rated this one four out of five stars on Goodreads. I thought it was a good read. I mean, you really should check this one out if you're into supernatural, suspense, thriller type stuff. Next up we have Superman Earth 1 Volume 3. And this is a, a new series that reminds us why Earth 1 is just so much better than previous incarnations. Because it gives us a fresh new perspective on classic old DC characters. Now, I kind of vaguely remember the events of first volume 1 and 2. And one of my biggest gripes with this Superman is he's more like a super boy than a superman. He's so very young, so very fresh and green, but yet I love the take on the book that it, 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 this volume introduced two villains, two classic Superman villains, and there was just such a fresh take that I had to rate this four out of five stars just for that alone. There were some things that I found very problematic, like that I just didn't like. Like, Superman's girlfriend is his next-door neighbor, and she is a hooker. Yes, she's a hooker. She reveals herself as an escort to Superman, and come on now, it is, you know, it's 2015. If you do not know that an escort is a hooker, then you must be living in a cave. But yeah, I thought that was one of the downsides to this story. I was just like, why would Superman, who is the all-American you know, Boy Scout, why would he be dating a hooker? You know, like, that just doesn't make any sense. But then again, it's DC's Earth 1. So, yeah, I definitely think you should check this out if you're kind of new to reading Superman and you want to see a different side to a classic superhero, then definitely feel free to check this one out. You won't be let down. It has got some definite new, fresh innovations. Next up we have Miss Marvel Generation Y. This is Volume 2. I have mixed feelings about this book. I think it's kind of cool and unique that they're, they're trying to do something different by have it be a teen girl of a different ethnic origin than the common superhero for Marvel. I think that's interesting, but this book really seems to be appealing for teens or really young adults because the villain in this this story was so kind of immature-ish, it was kind of kiddish, it was a, a clone of Thomas Edison mixed with a cockatiel. It was just really kind of lame. And yes, he was in the last book, but to bring him back for another volume was just, it was just, eh. I mean, the one thing that made this book interesting and at all appealing to me were the cameos featuring well-known Marvel superheroes like Lockjaw, Wolverine, and a few others. I'm not going to spoil it for you. If you really want to find out who's in it, you can read it. But like going back to the villain reminding me of a Scooby-Doo villain, he kind of has this whole idea like he's the grumpy, grouchy adult and... And would, he would, his plans would have worked if it wasn't for those rotten kids, you know, that foiled his plans. So yeah, I just really wasn't feeling this. It was okay. It's an okay read. Um, but like I said, I think this appeals mostly to teens. And it even says on the back it's, it's T+. Plus. So I'm thinking this is more for teens, maybe teen girls. Because it seems to appeal mostly to females and young females at that. Um, I only rated this 3 out of 5 stars. It was just okay. I just really was not feeling it. I know it's getting hyped up right now just because it's it's a Marvel Now book and it seems to be hot and trendy. But Next up we have Spider-Girl Volume 1. And if you recall the last few books like a while ago, a couple weeks ago, I read some Spider-Girl single issues that were library editions. Those were a part of this, so I flew through this in no time. 
the only stories I hadn't read in this volume was the first one, which was issue zero, and I think, yeah, issue five. Well, overall, I thought this was a good introduction to who Spider-Girl was, but still, her origin story still felt a little weak. It just wasn't up to, you know, what I thought would be a great origin story. So, yeah, I mean, it was just okay, and the cover looks nothing like how she's ever drawn. So I don't know, they got this done separately, apparently. They had the cover done up after. And I don't know why they just didn't use one of the cover images from one of the books. But what can you do, you know? Well, anyways, I rated this one 3 out of 5 stars. It was just okay. It's a nice little uh, pocket size reader. And I would say they, this would be suitable for children. I w didn't really see anything too wrong with it. So, yeah. Hey guys, this is where I'm going to end my weekly wrap up with Spider-Girl Presents the Buzz and Dark Devil. These were um, two little side heroes that were they were introduced in the Spider-Girl comics and some of them, they're kind of interesting. Um, the buzz is based on like the powers of a housefly and ironically it was a suit created by J. Jonah Jameson to combat Spider-Man originally. And of course the Dark Devil is like a demonic, like possessed teenager who's kind of like the Daredevil, and this is his origin story, by the way. They're both origin stories for these two characters. I did think this was really interesting, but yeah, they were very short-lived, and they were kind of, you know, campy, and not very, not that great of stories that I, you know, thought highly of them. I did rate this book 3 out of 5 stars. It's okay. If you're looking for a light read, something entertaining, then yeah, feel free to check this out. But yeah, it's just okay. And it's not anything I would really want to revisit or get more into. And I can see why they only made a few issues. So yeah. That is my weekly wrap-up for the week. Questions, comments, as always, down below. Let me know if you've read any of these. If you have any recommendations, leave them down below, too. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Until next time, later, guys.